Yes, good day folks. Here we are in the back porch and we have a lovely meal here of something called pita bread. P How do you spell that, Peter? Pizza tea. P-I-T-A. Pita bread. Pita bread. Not pizza. Not pizza, right. Pita. And we have melangene, curried melangene with potato. And this is supposed to do us wonderfully well, keeping our bodies healthy. Of course, I came out kind of late and Mama's plate is <laughs> practically empty. But the thing is, I finished eating my pita bread and I have nice melangen and curry remain. Uh, uh, so I want another piece. <laughs> so, so, but you're supposed to, I mean, this diet that we are on, it's supposed to be one portion, you know. And it is the equivalent to what? What was said about this? Sana? That's maybe like about 100 to 120 calories. 100 and 120 it calories. Is and it is. So that you want to put in 240, right? No, I don't want to put in 240. I want to put in 180. <laughs> <laughs> so I want 50% of yours. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Since this is a thing of sharing, you go ahead and uh, break it. <laughs> Only just a little portion. Eh? Yeah, just, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. You, you know, the curry tasted so good, mm. but to just eat it by itself, it's healthy. It's very but healthy. I'm feeling like I've had to eat a piece of your extra piece of bread. Well, I mean, Sam, I could well cook, you know. You could well cook, man. And because he could well cook, or cook well, we could eat well. Mm. How's she going on, good? Dragon. They make food look good, you know. It is delicious. Yeah. This melangen was cooked with two cupfuls of rub. Two cupfuls, eh? Two cupfuls. So we're supposed to get our stomach supposed to be satisfied. Okay. Well, let's flip camera here. So here's Lancy. Here's Lancy about to try some of the melangen. Mm -hmm. I love melon gel and I love curry and I'm beginning to love the pita bread. Mm. Only to learn that to be very satisfied. Mm -hmm. I see Farmer Harry has made some headway to get in his um, passport gel. Mm -hmm. So soon, soon. Antigua. He'll be winging his way to Antigua. Antigua, here I come. 365 beaches. Of course, I, see, I would love to go to Antigua. You but know, if that's he goes, a place we haven't been. <laughs> but if he goes, if he goes for, for one week, he'll have to cover 52 beaches, you could say. But he just, he just walking through the water from beach to beach. <laughs> <laughs> he just go out the That's how he just crossed the upstream going That's how he just crossed the stream. He walk in. From beach to beach, mm. corner to corner. That's oh. another beach. <laughs> you can make it. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Yeah, man. I think you need to clean your glasses a little bit, Louis. The one today. Yeah, what I couldn't. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a speck somewhere there. Water, though. Is it water? Mm -hmm. You're good now, Val? Yes. Mm hmm. Hey, are you freaking? You're satisfied now, Val? Yes, sir. Mm. <laughs> Good girl. Me too. The flowers are happy and quiet. Very little wind this morning. But of course, of course. I love that tree in the back of you. Which tree is that? That ficus. That tree is supposed to be a massive tree, you know. Yeah. And by being in a pot, it is sort of like being maintained small. But never mm -hmm. so often you have to be cutting it back mm -hmm. so it could remain a sort of bonsai 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 a bonsai um give me a, when you finish leave a little coffee for me please okay Tolu. 
I am kind of taken up with what Lyndon said to me the other day. Mm-hmm. That every day we should focus on three positive things that have happened to us in the course of the day that will prompt us to you know do better the next day. Yeah. That so sounds, tell me that sounds pretty positive. Mm-hmm. So tell me what three things happened to you, or maybe four or five yesterday, that will propel you into a better day today. <clears throat> well, one wonderful thing happened yesterday was I woke up at eight o'clock and I found you in the bed. <laughs> good, good, good. <coughs> mm. Did that repeat itself today? Yes, it did. Okay. And I look forward to that again. Okay. So why do I leave the bed early? Well, for one, I stay too late in the bed. Okay. And you are an early bird. Mm-hmm. You are a morning person, while I am not a morning person. Mm-hmm. But of course, that's where compromise comes in. Mm. Because I'm not a morning person, you will get out of bread, and you will have your breakfast, mm-hmm. and then you would, you would um, read your Bible. Mm-hmm. And in that period of time, that's when I will come crawling out of the bed. Mm-hmm. So, timing is a little bit different at the beginning of the day. Mm-hmm. Because now when I am ready to come out of the bed to have breakfast, that's when you may go back in bed. Yeah, but does that affect you in any way? But yesterday, hmm? yesterday, it was pleasant to wake up to find you next to me and we were able to chat a little bit and talk about scriptures a bit Mm -hmm. so that was a very positive pleasant and memorable but ever since have been that way it has always been that way Mm -hmm. but of course now that's where the compromise comes in if i had you demanded that I wake up when you wake up at 6.30 to give you breakfast. Then I would have been bursting at the same. Mm-hmm. Because my brain doesn't kick in until nearly about 8 o'clock, especially in old age. <laughs> so. Do you miss working? I mean, you used to have to get up very early. Not at all. I, I, I never miss working because one of the biggest assets and positivity about not going to work was to sleep in late. Mm-hmm. And I have been home now 15 years. <clears throat> 15 years I've been retired. And I never, ever feel I want to go back out to work. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that my personality is one that I give, I give of my best at something Mm -hmm. and when I'm finished, I had 40 years working, you know, I was very satisfied that I have worked hard I have given my employers due due um I well I labored for my earnings Mm -hmm. the only thing I might have cheated over the years for but that could have come that might come up to about two years (laughs) it's been late on mornings (laughs) How you feel when computerization came into the company for an older person? It was quite challenging. Mm. Yeah, it was very challenging. I think there was a lot of fear among the older folks because I would say computer came in maybe in the last 20 to 30 years mm. before I left. And... Um, mm. 
it was quite an adjustment and there were some people fortunately they were drawing close to retirement that they just kind of buy their time and they would uh, some of them would do the work on the computer and yet still do the manual work to be sure it's correct <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever fear losing any material you might have typed oh in? my gosh that was always a fear mm. when something disappeared off the scene I would be like, oh no, I've lost it. But there were times that I really lost things to it, eh? mm -hmm. forgetting to save. Okay. And then you have to go all over. But once you save, you would never lose what you're doing. No, I like the word save, right? Huh? Yeah. You could save your marriage. Of course. And not lose things. Yes. Because whatever you're punching to today's activities. What, what put in is what comes out there. Eh? Whatever you put in. You're putting garbage into a computer, garbage will come out. Mm -hmm. And if you're putting garbage into your life, garbage will come out. If you're putting toxin, toxin will come out. Mm -hmm. And and it will come out in a real way, you know. If somebody's very toxin on the job, very toxin on the job, you know, that person suffers a lot of ill health. Mm -hmm. They suffer a lot of ill health. Ill health. <clears throat> so, so whatever we put in is what will come out. We put in toxin into our lives, toxin, poison comes out of our life. We get sick, many things go wrong, start malfunctioning. If we put in malice in our life, it will come out in a very, in a, in a manner, your behavior will show that there is malice and anger. So would you say that you didn't put these things into your life, into your working life, and you didn't have it into your married life? How was your personality able to affect younger folk coming to work with you? What kind of relationship you had with them as an older person mm -hmm. with a younger colleague? Well, at for about a year or so, I supervised a department of like maybe about seven young people straight out of school. And we had that group of young people were very, very cooperative. And there was a lot of love in the department. And we would do things like if it's somebody's birthday, everybody will make something and we will go to the cafeteria and sit together and sing happy birthday and have the meal and even make some little speeches. That I really enjoyed that year when I was in um, service station accounting mm. with these young people. They were very, very nice. <clears throat> but um, most of my life was spent in audit. It, I, Maybe another year, time too, I got a stint at being the cashier. And that was a very responsible job in that, you know, you had to be every day balancing your petty cash and um, making bankings. So it was very routine. It was a routine job being a cashier. In audit, however, it had its many challenges because when from the time people here you come to order them they would uh, sort of um you know clamp up on you and you have to first make them comfortable before they could cooperate with you so that had its challenges you know now talking about auditing here the NP had several old vessels i can't remember what was, what was the name of those vessels you had to audit at times on those vessels? Scott Unity and Scott Enterprise. What was it like, you know, walking down through the yard, heading down into the quay? Walking along, down the jetty. Walking along the jetty. <laughs> you will you will, you enjoy that? Very much because it it, it was different. The, and that is the, the beautiful part about in you know, auditing. It nothing was routine. Every department you go to audit, it was challenging. Mm. You know, and that 
about it, you're talking about is that will be the marine department. Mm -hmm. And um, so we would meet with the captain. Most of them were like from, they were English, mm -hmm. because that was part of the contract that we contracted these uh, vessels. But the engineer, the um, captain, and I think the first mate, first officer had to be foreigners. Uh, and we had also Russians. Russians? Mm -hmm. On the vessel? Yeah. Okay. Um, As officers? Koraish, Koraisha. Koraya? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Yeah, yeah, there, there were... There were um, Russia? One guy was from Croatia. Croatia? Croatia. Croatia uh, is yeah. that part of Russia? That's part of Europe anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they were like, let's say Europeans. Okay. And they were very pleasant, very um, accommodating. They, you, they indicated that they loved Trinidad? Um, yes, but they like to go home every, they were like, would be on six months and six months on and six uh -huh. months off, you know? Yeah, and they would be in Trinidad, and sometimes they went to Venezuela, sometimes they went to Ar Curacao or Aruba. You mean the vessel? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. with fuel? Yeah, for fuel, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we would have to, like... Um, you ever ate <laughs> meals on those vessels? What? That was the best part! <laughs> Recess time! <laughs> Lunch time, boy! <laughs> oh, yeah. Well... Um, my, um, my, one of my co-workers, both of us will usually go, and she was very, um, um, what shall I say, letter to the letter. Very reserved about things. Reserved about things, and, um, she will not feel that it is right to have a meal on the, on the vessel. You know, mm -hmm. I, I say I couldn't be bought for a plate of food. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I wouldn't be bought for a plate of food. Mm. You'll have to buy me for much more than that. Two plates, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so when we go and we announce that we are there, you know, we will, I will say to them, we will be here until about two, three o'clock. <laughs> so they know the foot of our name in the pot. <laughs> Well, that's only fair. Oh, because when you're going to get lunch on a vessel in the ocean. <laughs> but you know, it's a strange thing, eh? Um, <clears throat> even in my tenure of doing transport work with NP, and we will go to gas station. Can I just put my legs up? That's okay for me. Yeah. Right. Um, yes, during my tenure as a, as a transport contractor with NP, <clears throat> you went to gas stations it might have been a hot day or whatnot and whatnot right but we never my friend and i who worked in the truck we never felt that we had to ask for anything eh? no. but it was wonderful and i could name two gas station dealers and i pay tribute to them now <coughs> who, who had it in their heart to really say go to the cooler there and have a soft drink yeah and that was mrs eastman Yes. Mrs. Eastman, our neighbor's mother, right? She would say, Lance, go and help yourself to two drinks. One for you, one for my and your friend. Yeah. And the other gas station dealer would have been Guppy. And they were in El Socorro Road at the time. Okay. And then they were also in Mount Lambert at the time. Not that we solicited anything. No. But no. they were of their own kindness, right? Yeah. I, I, this... This same co-worker of mine, if you go to a gas station to do inventories and they offer her a drink, she will say no. And I told her once, I said, listen to me. Yes, there are things like bribery and there are, the people do try to compromise you as an auditor. A drink or a plate of food cannot compromise me. And I. Unless you got a very good appetite. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, 
I like to appreciate kindness. A lot of people <coughs> don't know how to say thank you. Because I don't know whether it is felt that you're going to ask, because you give me a drink, a, a soft drink, of course, I'm not going to take a beer on the work, on the job, but you offer me a soft drink. And I know I go, I just came in and it was hot out there. And you ask, offer me a drink. And I really want it. I, it goes against my grain to say no thank you. Because this is an act of kindness to me that I'm turning down. And deep inside of me, I could do with it. I don't, I can't appreciate that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So, and people have different personalities. And I, I always felt that I personally did not see anything wrong with accepting something to drink or being on the vessel that we were invited for lunch. I would compliment the cook on his good job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, we will go on to ensure that the captain and the chief officer, that they had the adequate papers to be on the vessel, mm -hmm. you know, because there are certain qualification ISO has for the degree of the qualification of a captain and a first officer. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we would check when we go on the vessel. Well, you know, Luis, <clears throat> talking about um, accepting a sense of integrity is really very important there. Eh? I remember there was um, a transport, there was a driver uh, belonging to a private company and he had gone to make a delivery somewhere he was not an M NP employee but a, a contractor yeah a driver for a contracting firm and he had gone to some place and while they were looking over the invoice he saw this I think it was a pen on the table and he picked it up and walked out with it by the time he got back to NP, he was fired, you know. Oh, NP don't make joke for... for, for uh, do? <laughs> I tell you. He was, he was <coughs> fired. I mean, you let a pen compromise your whole family reputation, you know, employment. But, as easy as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is one thing I always say working in the audit department, NP will not fire you for late coming. They wouldn't fire you for probably even not performing well on the job. But you touch the company money or their assets or the whatever. No question. And the reputation is important. Yeah, no question yeah, yeah. asked. Yeah. Is out you go immediately. So that was that was a kind of hard part for me during my time in auditing. That when you would go to to surprise visit to the cashers, mm. and the the money is missing, mm. that you know this person is going to be fired. So let's go back a little bit now to yesterday's gains. Right. <clears throat> as as regards to what it has done for you today. So you see lying in bed and chatting and maybe reading our Bibles, right? What other thing came out of it? You mean the other Yes, you, you must have some gains. You remember your your more your morning is not the gain given. out of that or what no, other the gain, things? what other gains you okay. acquired along the way. Right. Because the the, the the exercise is that every day yeah, yeah. we're supposed to be multiplying our gains okay. positively. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Lasana 
Lasana cooked yesterday mm -hmm. when she had been doing most of the days. Mm -hmm. And um, so because he was cooking, it was not my day for washing because that's Tuesday is a slow day. So I had some time and I was able to go through some pictures, mm -hmm. lots of pictures that have been a job that I have to do to get some of them into albums, pictures taken out for different reasons. So what happened when you were doing this? It so, stirred your memory, it stirred your yeah, memory? Yes, so, so I spent like maybe almost two hours sorting out some pictures because you had been asking me about certain pictures mm -hmm. and I would keep putting you off and say, Lancey, I don't have time for, to go and look for that for you now, you know. So, I didn't get the particular set of pictures that you wanted, but I was able to get some that was of interest to you. Mm -hmm. And so I felt that I have achieved, to a point, a request that you asked of me a little while. So that was a positive thing. Right, right. right. Of course, in the process of doing that, I was able to look back long memory lane, because you know, when you're sorting pictures, you want to put them by groups and whatever. Pictures, love pictures with you and I for that special album. Um, family pictures, pictures of friends, occasions. Mm -hmm. Because you're no long ago. It's not like now you have your poly pictures on your camera and you download it on a flash drive and uh, or whatever. What we have years and years and years of pictures hard pictures as they call it hard, hard cover pictures hard copies uh-huh hard copies so so i was able to sort some note which i now have to put in respective albums mm -hmm. so that was another positive thing that i did and then in the afternoon valerie and i went for a walk mm -hmm which was good because I did start off. So that was my second day of going to work. Mm, very good, very good. So how is this going to motivate you today? Well, this morning, my timing again was good. You were in the bed. Right. <laughs> I know you're in the hammock. I know I'm in the hammock. <laughs> <laughs> and we are talking about what was done yesterday. Right, right. So that's another positive thing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, maybe I should I should come across a little bit here now. I enjoyed yesterday staying in bed. All right, let me pull that for you. I kind of jot down a couple of things here, right? Mm -hmm. I enjoy staying in bed, chatting and reading. And of course, you brought me breakfast in bed. Well, that. I forget to say that, but anyway, it's better you say that for the tables turn around, you get breakfast in bed. <laughs> well, you got breakfast in your hammock this morning, right? <laughs> we had a very healthy lunch meal cooked by Lasana. How do you pronounce this word? Gyro, gyro, what? That was for breakfast. And we also had it for um, for lunch, too. No. No? Daddy, that was in the afternoon we had that. In the afternoon, we had that? Yes, for lunch, so, I had... So what is it? This this gyro? 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 How do you pronounce that? Sana? Pizza. It was pizza bread. Pizza Piz bread. Pizza bread. Just pizza like bread. what you had this morning. Yeah. But you know, I often have a lot of problems with this gyro and gyro. I don't know. I'm not even sure why it is. Well, if, it's, if you're a Jap Lebanesian, you might say gyro. <laughs> but as a Trinidadian, we might say gyro. <laughs> right. So then I... For lunch, I had lentil peas, uh -huh. rice, mm -hmm. and peanut butter chicken. Wow, that was really good. Yeah, that, that was a tasty meal. Mm -hmm. The proteins were really coming up then. Wait a minute, did we not have turkey with that? Turkey, turkey the day before. Turkey the day before? Mm -hmm. My goodness. The tie then, up your days, bad boy. Yes, it's true. I need to go back in bed now. <laughs> but anyway, I was reading a very fantastic story Written. Oh yes, of course. I forgot you started reading. Written by but Oscar. we didn't finish it yet. No, it's still, it's still to be. Well, you could. I don't. I don't somewhere. read to finish. Right. I read to enjoy. Well, you could continue it for me. 
Some sometimes today, yes. And Louise likes no. to be no. Louise likes to be read to, you see. And um, she still hasn't started or finished or got halfway through the ghost of Cora. But it's all right. I gotta start over. How many times you start in Labo Gill? When I see trouble, I keep starting it. And then you can't remember where <laughs> you reach. And then I don't remember where I reach and I go back again. Yeah. But I tell myself I'm not reading any book until I read your book. Well, no, I think you better not punish yourself. Read whatever comes to hand. Otherwise, you'll miss a lot. No, man. Loyalty is loyalty, man. Anyway, the story I was reading by Oscar <coughs> Wilde is um, a young fisherman goes fishing and he pulls into his boat a mermaid he falls in love he's depressed when he understands that he can't get her but then he asks how could this work out and the big task that he has on his hand as dictated by the mermaid is you must part with your soul mm. he says i don't even know what my soul is like Jeremy. So he goes to the priest, and the priest says, No, what madness is this? You cannot part with the only thing that is that has value to life, your soul. You can't part with your soul. That's a that's a hideous request. I'm not going to pray for that. And he says, But the soul means nothing to me, and love love means everything to me. Love, love is in the air. Love is in the air, and love is everything. I will sell my soul, I will sell even heaven. I wouldn't want you to sell your soul for my love, eh? No, that is something that we can't do. That's something I will not entertain. We, we could be soulmates. 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 Right. So, I don't want your soul, but we could be soulmates. So the man goes, and he, the priest says, you better remove yourself from here, because this is a terrible thing. The soul is worth everything. So he walks away from the priest and he goes into the market area. He's wandering, he's distressed about this love that he has for this woman. He needs her, he'd do anything to get her. Love could make man crazy, yes. yeah? He has to even leave his earthly location to go and live in the sea with this woman, right? You'd be willing for that, for that sake? Well, there are people who do all these things. Now, you have to draw these similarities in life from the story. Yeah? Yeah. There are people who will sell their soul for the love of a woman, regret it later. Anyway, the story, back to the story. So he's walking through the, he's walking through the, the marketplace. Some merchants approach him and they say, listen, what do you have to sell? He said, I have only my soul to sell. And they said, your soul, that is worth nothing to us. He said, well, but this is a strange thing because the priest says, my soul is worth more than silver and gold. And you're telling me that my soul is worth nothing. So what, you know, this is such a conflict going on here. So they said to him, why don't you visit the witch upon the mountain top? And he goes there and the witch is beautiful, but the witch has a problem. She falls in love with him. But yet she's at the command of the enemy of our souls, the devil himself. And she says, tonight you come and you dance on the mountain top. And he goes on the mountain top and he dances with the witch. And then while he's dancing, he sees this, the image of a man standing in a corner in a dark cloak with a dagger in his hand. And it would seem that not only his soul must be sold or parted with, but also his heart. You will die. Well, you remember his quest is that he wants to get into the sea. That's to right. To live with yeah. the sea folk. So but now, yeah, he needs his heart. Well, you know, you're going to lose your heart and your soul for, for something you love. What does it profit a man if he gives his own soul and suffer the loss of everything? What does it profit if he gains the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? So he is prepared to suffer the loss of his soul for someone he loves. And that has always been, well, that's as far as I've got in the story. I'm sorry that it sounds like I'm cheating on the end, but maybe another time when I've read further and see the outcome. Well, when it, you finish and read the book for me, you will. Yes, we so will. So you won't have to read it again. We will follow up with this. 
Yes. So then in the evening... Because I am looking forward to the end of that story. Very good. So in the evening, I went for a walk. And I must tell you folks that since my heart attack, since my inability to walk and my muscles have shriveled up, I am beginning to feel comfortable in myself again. And therefore, walking day before yesterday and four days last week, I have begun to feel a lot better. Congratulations, man. I can see it, man. Thank you very much. And the environment here is pleasant. It's quiet. It's encouraging. We have very selective meals by Lasana, and we have good company in Valerie and in Louise. We have very good neighbors. We've had good visitors to the home, and we really appreciate the quality of life that we have. My one desire would be today that folks everywhere, young, newlyweds, people in older marriages, people divorced, that there would be a measure of peace and quiet. There would still be that God will grant that grace that people could find quietness. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. It's possible. It must be something inquired of. And um, I like what someone said recently, that if we're not seeing our way, we have to pray. We have to be like beggars when it comes to seeking God. We have to keep on begging, begging, begging. And God loves beggars, people who inquire of him, people who want his help. He's not going to hold back that grace. So, Louis, this sounds like a little, um, a little bit of um, preaching. Yes, now, wait, let me, um, all right, just. So, what, you're focusing on something? Let me see, let me just focus there. On that. On what? Okay. Where's the curtain? Across there. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's me. Go close there. No, wait. I, I'm looking at my neighbor across there with this dragon fruit. Francis! Hi. What's up, man? Hmm. How are the fruits coming along? I guess it's chocolate. You get it? <laughs> but they look healthy, eh? They're coming. I see some buds coming up now. Very nice, very nice. I look forward to your fruit growing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I see a mango tree pushing over here, boy. See what? Your mango tree blossoming. Oh, the mango tree. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, how are things? Everything quiet. Well, let's see what we're doing. Only in a hotel or something. Only to make them real to proper tea taxes. Categorize your house as a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I say go next door, check the guy. Yeah. You say the pool is next door. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, man. Nothing good. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Nice, nice. And on your side, all right? Yeah, man. Yeah. That's nice. Your hair looking good, man. Oh, I like no, the hair. I like thing. the hair, man. It, it looks wavy. It looks healthy. Yeah, well, I have seen nine years. Yeah. 79. The, the whole head of yeah, experience, yeah. you know. Yeah, man, yeah. Beautiful. I always admire nice gray hair. I, I, since I small, I used to look at my uncle's and I, uh, yeah. you see them with it. People said a gray hair. Yeah. And I wanted to say, I want to have that. Yes. Yes. And your brother had a nice puff himself, eh? Uh, yeah. Mm. Beautiful man. Beautiful. Never die, man, yeah? Never die, is that? Never, never, never. You're not one of those who rather die than tell the age. I like Chinese, Chinese, never die. Never die. <laughs> 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 well, I Chinese, I never die. Never die, never die. Yeah. That's never good, die. boy. Yeah, How are you, Pong? Were the tree growing in front? Good? Um, I find even, even you are with the dry season. Yeah. They get kind of spotty to the top. Yeah, okay, but um, it will come along. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, the dry season had them looking a little bit. Um, Let me see how you're looking ready. The stamp way. That's where the girl wrote to pick them, you know. Ah, you're a girl, lad. Oh, but look at those up there. I think Lasana said he picked one last night. 
Uh-huh. But it was kind of. What you outside last night? He said he was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. But it's amazing that this tree is enduring, eh? Yeah, I, I thought it died the other day. Mm hmm, mm hmm. I thought to myself, you know. The resurrection and everything. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to give a shout out to anybody? Your family, anywhere? Anybody, anybody? Pearl has, Pearl has a cousin in, um, in, in Canada on the West Coast. Mm. And she said from time to time she'll check all you out. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, okay, nice, and nice. And Francis, you also have somebody up at yours we are now watching. Yeah, there's a young lady. Not a, I mean, I've seen her name come up. I can't remember the first name. Sana will know it. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. she, she follows. Okay. She follows, yeah. But we're not good at retaining names, eh? Yeah. Unless I write them down, you know? Yeah, like me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, you you at the stage I was five years ago. <laughs> so five years ago, I forget things, eh? <laughs> so I forget that I forget things. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something, Francis. You had a very important job in the civil aviation. You enjoyed your working life? Because that's talking about our past working life. Basically, I, I, I always say that if I had to live my life again, if I got the, the proper education that I should have got, um, I would not have worked for the government. Mm. No, I would have worked, yes, in Trinidad and Tobago, but um, public working in the public service, when I started at Civil Aviation, they were in the public service. Mm. And um, although we were doing things like air traffic control, which many people consider one of the, the, the riskiest jobs, the, the one with, with, with a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result of that, it, it, it sort of demands a, a certain level of um, salaries and allowances and things like that. And the government service, at the time that I joined, no, we didn't get that. We were, mm -hmm. we were in the categorized as public servants and got the menial, the, the, the menial salaries with the, the menial increases like you see now 4% for them and 30% for the big boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, we were never treated well in that category. Um, it is only when, um, when civil aviation became an authority, a statutory board run by a board mm -hmm. that um, you know, the, the benefits increase a lot. Increase. And I, I, I'm not ashamed to say that it increased sometimes three times. You were working for one salary um, in the government service, mm -hmm. Ministry of Works, Civil Aviation Division, and then um, you got employed by the Civil Aviation Authority, which replaced the um, Civil Aviation Division, and your salary went up three times, I mean, 300% increase in yeah. some matter of time. And um, it was only then that we started to get uh, proper remuneration for, for the work that we were doing. But um, the question you asked me if I enjoy my work, I enjoy my work to the extent that uh, uh, you, you take the training that they give you, anybody, is, you, you train to do a job, and once you understand what you're doing and you, you feel satisfied, you, you know, you, you do the job and you enjoy it. And at the end of it, um, I mean, I could look back and see so many um, air traffic controllers, uh, in, especially in the islands up, up the, um, the Lesser Antilles that um, passed through the training school when I was an instructor there. You take somebody in as a, a an apprentice then, and um, after a few months of training, they become an air traffic controller, and, and they have they have a job for life. But um, I pass right through. I enjoy being an air traffic controller. So tell me about the risky part of this job. You mentioned something about the about high risk. Oh, the, I mean it's obvious, stress. but I, I need stress. to. Uh, How does the stress come about? Okay. Stress comes about by um, the seriousness of the job. You, you, you are not allowed to make a mistake. If you make a mistake, then um, it, it could end in disaster, it could end in loss of property, not 
not to talk about lives, and I mean with the, the size of aeroplanes that they have now, you're talking about hundreds of people that could perish in, in one accident, as you see. And we have a few examples that are throughout the, the world in the past. But um, that stress alone, if you make a mistake, um, it, it could be disaster. Be so, what disaster. provision is made for someone under stress in this job? Oh, the, to retain. The, uh. the, you could leave the job if you find that it's too stressful. As we have had in the past, we had many people who were trained as their traffic controllers, and when they get the stress of the job, they say, "No, I can't take this," and, and they, they leave. Mm. But um, yes, there are areas that um, you, you could get counseling and and things like that, yes. Mm -hmm. And you could move on to other things. But um, I enjoyed being on a traffic controller. Mm -hmm. What about the job you liked? Uh, you mean other than that? No, no, no. no. I mean, the specifically the oh. air traffic controller. Oh, you, you, you feel, you feel, well, the, the most um, satisfaction you get is from training people and, and changing. The, you know, they come into to the classrooms at the beginning and they know very little about their traffic control and then at the end of your period of training and testing and all sorts of things you you, you produce air traffic control as well. you look back and you see i mean people who and, and i'm not talking about the, the highfalutin people eh? mm. it, it's it's more gratifying to to take the grassroots person as we have many in that many of us in air traffic control came from meager backgrounds and um, we did well, and right now, they, a lot of the air traffic controllers, they, they, they are like that. Okay. Um, and you, you, uh, you, you take somebody who would normally go on the street and do some little uh, other job, not that the jobs are not are like carpentry and masonry, and these things, they are important, but you take them and you put them in a, a different strata of, of, mm -hmm. of life, and they, they be able to benefit, and have a family and be able to afford a lot of, of the things that, are, that they would mm -hmm. not otherwise be able to mm -hmm. afford. Very good, very good. Produce, so how do they, how does one apply for a job? Huh? Is it put out in the newspapers or something? Yes, um, they, they do recruit people from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, they put out the advertisements. Uh, they, the requirements, I'm not too sure what the, what the requirements are right now. But, um, and, and this is because I am a retiree and I, I am back in the, 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 the 20th century as an air traffic controller. Right. We are in the 21st century now and um, it's, it's, it's a, different, um, a different cup of tea or kettle of fish as mm -hmm. you, they call it. But, um, it's, it's a good job, but any job that, uh, that you're doing, if you're, if you're a doctor, a lawyer, man, even, even building a house as a, 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 mm -hmm. a mason or, or, or whatever, you, you have to know the job, you have to learn, you have to be able to, to, uh, to take in you know, the, the, the methodology of, of, of what you're doing. And um, be confident about it. Once you know what you're doing, you'll be confident. And um, as, as I said in the beginning there, that um, air traffic control is considered a, a, one of the stressful jobs. And yes, it could be. It could be one of the stressful jobs. But if you put me to build a house, it's more stressful than me being an air traffic controller. <laughs> so did you try? You like flying? You, you enjoy flying? Knowing that the, the risk I involved. enjoyed flying when I was much younger, and um, the airports were, were freer. When I say freer, you know, you didn't have all this set of crime and, and, and mm. international um, things going on. Where, where um, I mean, it, it, it is so stressful now, even yeah. to walk through an airport. Right. right. You, you, you don't know if you're doing something wrong, if mm. somebody's going to hold you, if somebody's going to strip search you. If yes. you're traveling and, and things yes, like that. it does have its stresses. If, you, if, if you're traveling, like, like long ago, you're traveling, you want to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You want to go on board the aircraft. Oh, it's mm -hmm. nice. It smells good. You got a different um, food. Food. A lot of people travel because they enjoy the, 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 the airline food. 
No, you don't even get food. Yeah, dinner is a pack of nuts. Yeah, or or some little snack. I don't walk with your doubles. <laughs> walk with, well, that's a common thing now, yeah? Walk with the doubles. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. But tell me, did you ever go abroad for training or anything like that? Oh, you? Yeah, we, we do a lot of uh, training abroad. Um, air traffic control itself is being taught in Trinidad and Tobago, but uh, when you, you move into the other facets of aviation, like um, airworthiness, and uh, licensing and different things that, that civil aviation authority is responsible for. A, a lot of it is, is done abroad. abroad okay. Yeah. Interesting. A lot of it is do done in, in United States or Canada or United Kingdom. So is there any consultancy post that you could even as a, as a retiree? Not, not, not at my age. Not at your age? No. <laughs> well, I was never really attracted to, to that. I, I just moved out of it uh, when it was time to move out and, mm -hmm. and make room for the, the younger ones. Right, right. Yeah. This is a flying insect here. That's a bee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A honey bee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Francis, thank you very much. Okay. I really appreciate that. Okay, man. Anytime thank you have any subject that we could discuss, oh, yeah. I'm not over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again, brother. Yeah, okay then. Good All the best. Yes. Thank you too. That was very informative. Okay. Well, Mamalu is gone, so I guess we better call it George. <laughs> mm. Thank you very much, folks. Until later. We shall see what we come up with again. Thank you for listening and being there.